Hey guys, it's Jean-Claude, and welcome to part three of me testing out this brand new audio. Uh, I'm purposely putting some of the settings a little bit lower. Uh, hopefully it is still going to be loud enough for you guys. Uh, worst case scenario, I can try and fix it in post. We'll see how it goes. Today's deck opening is going to be for Keith Philibin, so wish him luck. Had a gigantic creature yesterday. Very awesome. Uh, like I mentioned in that video, we seem to open those up at a pretty good rate. Red Archon. First house is the Sorion. Second house is Logos. This will be hilarious if it's untamed just before... Okay, it's not. And the third house is Shadows. The reason I mentioned untamed to be hilarious because those are the three houses that have gigantic creatures. And then I was really going to love our odds of getting one there. Hex the Weary. And that is a pretty cool looking Archon. You got some sort of like electric thing going on. It's like an, maybe antennas, an old style back from like the 1950s there on the back. Down on its lower half. Got the, like, pincers up top. Very, very nice. All right, good luck. I figure for sure within, like, two weeks, we should definitely have this audio figured out. Probably a little bit sooner. Okay, let's get to the deck. Starting off with... Shadows, it's Xenothief, three power elusive fight. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Put one in your hand and one at the bottom of your deck. Finch Cloak with the damage pip, four power, fight, reap. If you have less amber than your opponent, steal an amber. Otherwise, each player gains an amber. The Shadowsmith, 3 power. Each mutant creature gains elusive. Reckless Rizzo, 1 power elusive. Action, steal 2 amber. Until the start of your next turn, Reckless Rizzo loses elusive. Vandalize, amber to every play it. Look at the top 3 cards your opponent's deck, discard one, and put the others back in any order. I must say, there is something about this that I really like. It seems to really work out for me whenever I play this. It's always disrupting my opponent's deck in some way, shape, or form. Tempting Offer, Amber Devy Plate with a Draw Pip, Enhanced a Capture Pip. Return an enemy creature to its owner's hand. If you do, your opponent gains an Amber. Shoulder Id with a Capture Pip, 6 power Taunt. Cannot fight. When it would deal damage, steal one Amber instead. Seeker Needle, Artifact with a Damage Pip. Action, deal one damage to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, gain an Amber. A lot of damage pips in here. Oh, and now I see where they came from. Mutant Cut Purse, 3 power, Enhanced 3 damage pips. Mug, Amber Devy Plate, move one Amber from a creature to your pool. Deal 2 damage to that creature. Look over there with a the draw pip, deal 2 damage to a creature. If it is not destroyed, steal an amber. Gamgee, 2 power elusive. Reap, if your opponent has more amber than you, you get to steal an amber. Now we're on to the Sorions. It's Monument to Faust. Artifact. Action. Keys cost plus 1 amber during your opponent's next turn. If Faust the Great is in your discard pile, keys cost plus 2 amber during your opponent's next turn instead. This is a great card, and you know what? What makes it even greater is the fact that this guarantees we have at least one Faust the Great in here. Both those cards are insane because increasing key cost is huge in Keyforge, and I just adore this card. Hedonistic Intent. Amber Devy play it. Exalt each flank creature. Another one of those. That's a little bit awkward. Dreadbone Decimus with a draw pip. 5 power, play fight. You may exalt it. If you do, destroy a creature with lower power than Dreadbone Decimus. Blast from the past. Exalt a friendly creature. Archive a Saurian creature from your discard pile. Deal damage equal to the archive creature's power to an enemy creature. Great card. Spoils of battle. Amber W play it. A friendly creature captures an amber. Each creature with amber on it captures one from its opponent. Prefectus Ludo, 5 power. Each other friendly creature gains destroyed. Move each amber from this creature to the common supply. There's that Faust the Great. Four power, your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each friendly creature with amber on it. Play, you may exalt a friendly creature. Curse of Vanity, Amber Devy play it. Exalt a friendly creature and an enemy creature. Chanta Hubris, Amber Devy play it. Move one amber from a creature to another creature. I just realized, wow, it feels like we're kind of low on creatures in the Sorion house. That might be a shame. Oh boy, come on, Sorions are known for creatures. Oh, another Chanta Hubris, this one with the damage pip. Axiom of Grisk, water creature. Destroy each creature with no amber on it. Gain two chains. Hmm, uh-oh, that ends the Sorions. I am not looking forward to seeing just how many Sorion creatures are in that house. Odd Claude, five power. Action, if your opponent has an odd amount of amber, you get to steal one. The Archivist, three power. If you archive the Archivist, archive it face up. While the Archivist is in your archives, instead of picking up all your archives, you may choose to pick up any number of cards in your archives. Please let this Logos have a pile of Archive cards. This would be insane. I would love to see a really good Archivist deck. The few times I've seen this guy, there have been almost no Archives or maybe one card that did it. Discombobulator, it's an upgrade. Amber W play it. This creature gains your Amber cannot be stolen. Standardized testing, destroy each creature with the lowest power and each creature with the highest power. Good to see cards that can affect your opponent's board. I'd almost rather see a Bouncing Death Quark, though. Opposition Research, enhance the damage pip. Enemy creatures cannot reap during your opponent's next turn. Come on, give us some archiving. Letho Logica, Amber W play it. Discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard a Logos card or run out of cards. If you discard a Logos card this way, put it into your hand. Infomorph, 4 power, enhance 2 draw pips. 
Another Infomorph. Oh, man. Come on. Where's the archiving? Everence in principle. Each player loses half their amber. Rounding down the loss. Gain one Jane. Another Everence in principle. This time with the draw pip. Oh, finally. Eclectic Inquiry. Amber to every play with the damage pip. Archive the top two cards of your deck, but only one of those makes it hard to get the Archivist in there. Especially considering it's two from the top, you can't even have the Archivist in your hand, then play that card. Oh boy. Diametric Charge, Amber Devy Play, deal one damage to a creature with a two damage splash. Okay, well, this deck had a lot of things that are pretty iffy. An Archivist that isn't going to do too much. A low Saurian Creature Count deck, but one thing it had going for it, it looks like it's a lot of Amber. Speaking of which, let's pull all of it up. See, look at this Saurian house. Plus, it has a lot of things that's going to exalt creatures as well, meaning we can take that amber as long as we can find a way to, I guess, kill those creatures. Oh, that's a capture pip. Might have been a few less than I remembered. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. 15 is not too terrible considering some of these like the Chant of Hubris is going to move it around and hopefully then we kill the creature that we put that amber onto. Exalting opponent's creatures, things like that. There was the uh, flank ones, hedonistic and tense right here. So if our opponent has smaller creatures, we should be able to kill them thanks to pips or maybe some of these actions. All right, so let's get our amber control up now. Which I'm going to be honest here, I don't recall exactly how much we had. I feel like there was a little bit inside of Shadows. Okay, Amber cannot be stolen is protecting Amber, but I guess we sh probably shouldn't count it. Let's put it back, actually. Two Everance and Principles. I'll never complain about having two of those. Give me three, though. That would be a little bit of a problem. Enemy creatures cannot reap. Sure. Odd Clawed. Axiom of Grass. Okay, we did have a better board wipe in here. Very nice. And I like the odds of our creatures having Amber. I guess we gotta be careful with this and the hedonistic intent because we don't want to keep more of our opponent's creatures around. Let's see, Dreadbow, no. Uh, there we go, Monument of Faust. Gamgee can steal. Shoulder Id. Reckless Rizzo next to a Shoulder Id. Yes, please. Finch Cloak can do it. All right, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 Amber Control cards. Not bad whatsoever, especially considering the fact that uh, at least three of those were bigger Amber Control cards, the two Everance and Principles, plus the Spoils of Battle. And then you also had some medium ones as well, the Faust the Great. Well, they could actually get to a big category, but like the Monuments of Faust, that's a good medium-sized one. All right, let's look at the creatures. And I do not have high hopes for a large creature count here. Almost makes me wish we had at least one more board wipe. Two is typically good for a decent sized creature deck. A deck like this, though, could have used a third. Here we go. One. Five. Ten. Fourteen creatures. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Man. Ooh. If this deck could have been a little bit quicker for moving, the Axiom of Gris could have been enough, maybe combined with the standardized testing. I guess maybe we didn't care for the Bouncing Death Quark because we had less creatures to begin with, but then again, still having the targeted removal would have been pretty good. Okay, the first thing we could talk about with this deck is there's one card that is better in this deck than it typically is in other decks. Uh, and that is, in a weird way... Can't believe I'm going to say this. Tempting Offer. It's actually important to have a card that bounces as opposed to just, say, doing a certain amount of damage. Maybe your opponent's creature is bigger than the amount of damage you could have done. Because there are a lot of ways, especially when it comes to Sorians, where we're going to be adding Amber to our opponent's creatures. So we have the two Hedonistic Intents, the Curse of Vanity, the Chant of Hubrises, and I believe that might have been all of them. Yes, it is. But what that means is the ones that can target certain creatures, we can put it all onto one very particular creature, knowing that we'll always have the tempting offer to be able to get that creature off the board, get that free amber. I really wish we'd had some more archiving cards with the Archivist, because I was thinking about how fun that would have been, because we had at least one other card inside of Sorion's archiving. What's the name of it here? Blast from the Past. Would have been nice in a heavy archiving deck to still be able to pull back certain things. That's what the Archivist does, right? Can you imagine if this would have said Archive a Creature card? That could have been insane, because then we could have had the Archivist in the discard pile, put it into there, then future Blast from the Past or the Eclectic Inquiry. At least we're getting the exact houses we're looking for. Once again, the Archivist just seems to have a bad draw. The Amber Control in here was overall nice. Uh, the real problem with this deck is 
only having 14 creatures combined with like 15 expected amber is a little bit of an issue. Generally, decks with lower amber counts need a lot of creatures because they have to rely on them to get the amber to forge the keys. I mean, that's what Key Forge is all about. You have to get keys before your opponent does. This is a racing game. And unfortunately, I don't think this deck will have exactly what it needs to be able to reliably win, even something like a Chainbound. I think it's going to be an okay deck overall, but in a sense, there was a lot of do-nothing cards that could have been really good had the deck had some complimenting cards. All right, Keith, well, I hope you like the deck. It's really hard seeing a gigantic creature deck yesterday. It brings up the expectation, and then whenever you see something like this, it does make us judge it a little bit more harshly than maybe what it really is. All right, guys, thank you once again for watching all my videos, and I'll see you next time.